Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Hart 2000 PSI 1.2 GPM electric pressure washer. Now this is their big boy. This is the most powerful electric pressure washer that I had found from Hart. Um, just looking at it really quickly, it looks like it has an induction motor which is known to last much longer. Um, and then they do list it as an axial pump, um, which there's basically a wobble pump, axial pump that are pretty close and then the more expensive units come with a triplex pump. Um, even as far as like the, the, the famous Krenzla pre electric pressure washers, those are using a wobble slash axial pump. So the triplex pump, um, although it is a benefit used in really high uh, PSI units, the fact that this doesn't have it is not a knock against it at all. Krenzla, known to be the best, uh, is using that same type of pump. So uh, I'm sure theirs is a little bit different. but. Regardless of all that guys, this looks like to be a fantastic little unit. Now again, most of these induction motor pressure washers, um, you're getting in the class of the Ryobi 2300 PSI, the DeWalt 2400, the Craftsman's, the, uh, the Greenworks, all the ones that have the induction motor typically are rated around 23 to 2400 PSI. Um, and then some of the Greenworks, the pros that even went up to 27 and 3000 PSI. So the fact that this one is an induction motor only, only rated at 2000 PSI is interesting to me. It just probably means it's gonna run really efficient. It's probably gonna last a good amount of time because it's not overly uh, creating an overdraw of power to the unit. Um, so I'm excited to check this thing out, guys. As always, we're going to be testing out the actual usable PSI, usable GPM. We're gonna test the noise level. We're gonna test how many amps it's pulling. We're gonna look at the accessories, and then we're gonna see if we can optimize this unit by switching out the nozzles to see what we can get. So stay tuned, guys. Let's go ahead and check this thing out. All right, so I went ahead and unboxed it and assembled the machine. It's super easy to assemble. Unboxing, um, I just wanted to go over some of the components that it comes with really quickly with you guys. Um, so first off, you have a little instruction manual, owner's manual. Um, this thing does come with a three-year limited warranty. And then up here, hanging on the handle, you also have a nozzle selection guide, kind of a, just some basic quick start instructions and things like that, so really cool. Uh, on the side, the wheels are a 10-inch wheel. However, the way they build this, you can see there's two little bolts right here. Um, so if you wanted to truck mount this, like if you have a mobile detail setup or something like that, and you wanted to use it as a truck mounted system, you can take it off of this, this little uh, cage. It should bolt in straight and should be perfect for that. So as long as the uh, numbers, the GPM PSI come out really well, then that could be a really good option for you guys. Next thing, uh, they do give you a pressure washer gun. Now this is the same one that all the other heart, uh, pressure washers came with. Really standard, standard quick connect on the front. Um, it does have storage for the gun right on the, on the back of it here. Um, also has storage for your hose. Let me get that off. The hose that they give you, again, is a 25 footer. And just like all the other ones, guys, it's cumbersome. And just like that, I was trying to just show you how flexible it is, which is, it's not very flexible and it kinked. So um, right there, creates a weak point in the line, stays kinked, just not the best hose at all. Always recommend, guys, uh, upgrading to an Uberflex hose. Super pliable, I have one here. I say this every video, I apologize if it gets old. If it does skip ahead a couple seconds, I apologize. <laughs> but for those of you who don't know, this is my favorite hose. Uh, it's called the Uberflex hose. Super, super pliable. Does not kink, it's lightweight. You can get it to roll over on itself, but it still has no kink in the line. There's no memory to it. So just a fantastic choice. It's an M22 by 14 connection point, which is what this unit is as well. So it's easy enough to just screw in. You don't need any adapters to get this thing connected. So it's fantastic, fantastic hose. Highly recommend it. It's linked down in the description below for you guys to check out. Another benefit of that hose, guys, is that it's 50 feet long. So you're able to get around cars, get around your, your house and things like that way, way easier without having to move the unit, which is really, really nice. Um, so moving on back onto the pressure washer, it does come with a 35 foot uh, power cord with a ground fault interrupt plug on it. Um, it, the unit also has a, uh, soap dispensing, uh, container here. Again, I always say I don't recommend these because when you do it, the hose comes right through here. It sucks it up and it comes right out of your hose. What that does is it's contaminating your entire hose while you're using it. Then when you want to switch over to clean water, you have to let that stuff just, you have to hold it for a couple minutes just to blast out all the residual, 
uh, solution that was in there that's in your hose. So not recommended in my opinion. I always recommend getting a foam can in. I have a video on that link down in the description. Moving on guys, right here is your water inlet mounted right on the front and your outlet is right here on the side. So not ideal, I prefer them usually to be completely in line, one, one coming in from one side, one going out from the other side, just to reduce any tangling. But they're far enough apart, it should be okay, I don't have any problem with that. Um, right on the top here, you do have a basic on off button, um, very similar to the one from the Ryobi. Now, I did a little research and someone also commented uh, on one of my past videos, Heart is made by a brand called, T uh, I guess the parent company is TTI, I believe it was. And apparently they're the parent company for Milwaukee Tools, Ryobi, um, Home Light, I believe, Heart. So gigantic brand, tons of brands behind them or in front of them, they're the one behind it all, um, but that are known to be really good. So I don't have any concerns with that kind of stuff. Um, again, it's an axial pump around the front here and it looks to be a induction motor. It's just, it's a large motor, so um, yeah. Yeah, induction motor just means it's gonna last longer. So really cool, really great looking unit. Again, the, the thing that I love about these so much is the fact that their color combos match the Uberflex so well that just this just looks like a great kit. So um, I really like that. Like I said, guys, this is very similar to the Ryobi 2300, other than the fact that it is rated at 2000 PSI. So let's go ahead and test this out and see um, what the actual usable numbers are. Before moving on to the test, I apologize, I forgot one thing is the nozzles that it comes with. It comes with three different nozzles, a soap dispenser, which is basically just a giant hole for water to come out, uh, a turbo nozzle, and just like all the other units, a 15 degree nozzle. However, the nozzle that came with the Heart 1700 PSI was a 1.8 orifice. The nozzle that came on the Heart 1800 PSI was a 1.7 orifice. The smaller the orifice, the more PSI you're gonna get, but you're gonna lose GPM. This one, this is the 2000 unit, uh, comes with a 15 degree 1.65 orifice. So is that where we're gonna be getting the extra PSI? I don't know. If that's the case, that's kind of a bummer. Again, it will last longer than all the others, but, um, yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know. So let's go ahead and test it now. Here we go. Okay, so we are over at the water source and power source pressure washers right here. Um, as always, I'm using the uh, pressure washer gauge to test this thing to see what the usable pressure is. I'm using the factory hose, factory gun. Now using that Uberflex hose and a different gun, which I always prefer a, a stubby gun, which just kind of cuts off here, it's easier to control. Uh, using those components does not affect the performance at all. But for this test, we're gonna be using the factory stuff. So again, I added a quick connect to the hose just so I can plug in my, my pressure gauge. And we are all set in line. So uh, I'm gonna be starting off, I'm gonna turn the water on, get this thing all set up, I'm gonna purge out the water. And then we will test first off the amp, amp reading, and then we'll test the decibels, and then we'll test the PSI, and then GPM. Okay, so I've got the pressure washer all set up now, water's purged out of it. I'm gonna put, use the 15 degree nozzle that the unit comes with. Again, it shows 1.65 orifice. So we've got that plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and turn the unit on. Cool, so it has a total stop system. I actually saw the little component, so I knew that it was gonna have that. But that's nice, once pressure builds up, it goes completely quiet. I'm gonna pull the trigger now. My, my amperage gauge is here. So I'm just gonna pull it and test the amps. Okay, so with this unit, we're running at 13 and a half amps using this nozzle. Again, this is a very small nozzle. The larger orifice, it'll drop the, uh, the amp usage as well, but good to go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the noise level now using a decibel reader that I have on my phone. Okay, so here's the decibel reader. Now ambient noise is typically right around the 50 mark. Um, it's a little bit loud outside, a lot of people moving around. It's windy, so it's probably gonna be a little bit higher, but let's just check it. Yeah, so we're sitting about a 62, 63 decibels. So uh, definitely louder outside than normal. However, shouldn't matter with the decibel reading test because this thing's definitely gonna be louder than that. Um, so what I do is I hold it about three feet away, pull the trigger, and let's test it. 
Cool, sitting at an average of 83 decibels, so right on par with everyone else um, on the lower side of all the others, but um, that's, that's where it's at. So let's go ahead and test the PSI now using this nozzle, 15 degree nozzle that it came with. Okay guys, so it's just kind of creeping its way up, um, but sitting about about 1850 right now. It'll probably get to that 1900 PSI after a little bit of usage. I literally just turned this thing on and started spraying it, so um, I'm pretty confident it's gonna get to 1900 PSI. I'll double check that when we're testing the GPM, but 1900 P PSI should be where it's at. Again, that's pretty fair. Typically it's about 100 PSI under on a lot of these units. So 2000 PSI rating, getting 1900 seems fair to me. And I'll go ahead and show you guys, just so there's proof for you. Here we go. So it's just sitting at the 1800 and creeping up. And like I said, I think once the machine kind of gets through its breaking period, 1900 PSI should be where we're at. So now that we know what the PSI is with the factory nozzle, we're gonna be testing out these nozzles. So the green one here is a 25 degree, 2.5 orifice. The degree, the pattern that it sprays at does not matter, doesn't affect the PSI or the GPM. It's the actual orifice size, the hole inside of it that makes the difference. So this one's a 2.5 orifice. This one's a 3.0 orifice. So this one's definitely gonna get more PSI than this one. This one's gonna get more GPM than this one. But I like to know across the range so we can really dial it in, especially if you're using it for car de detailing purposes. I like to operate around 1100 PSI. Um, so let's check them out. First up is the green 25 degree 2.5 orifice. And here we go. All right, so this one's sitting between 1050 and 1100. I'm not that happy that it already dropped it that much, um, but here you go. Okay, so it's really gonna depend now on water flow with this machine on if it's worth it or not. Obviously the induction motor, this thing is gonna last longer than the other units. Um, but performance is a, is a big factor as well. So switching over now to the 3.0 orifice, 40 degree nozzle. All right, so that actually dropped it all the way down to 700 PSI. Now the other units that we were using from Hart, the 1700 and the 1800, both got the same exact numbers. When I was using this nozzle, I was getting 900 PSI at 1.5 GPM. This thing's only at 700 PSI. So that one's not gonna be an ideal one for detailing. Um, so we're gonna be hoping that that 2.5 orifice gets good enough GPM. Let's find out. Okay, so as always, the way we test our GPM is I have my little measuring bucket right here. I'm gonna stick the nozzle into the bucket, let it run for one minute on a timer, and uh, whatever the water accumulated is, is however many gallons per minute. So we're gonna start off with the factory nozzle that they gave us, Let's put it in the bucket, and here we go. Okay, so after one minute with the factory nozzle, we're coming in just shy of five quarts. So I'm estimating that at 1.225 gallons per minute, operating at 1900 PSI. So um, we're spot on there, guys, that's, that's accurate. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the other nozzles. Let me empty this and then we will test the 2.5 orifice. Okay, 2.5 orifice is in the bucket, here we go. There's the 2.5 orifice. We are now sitting at five, five and a quarter quarts. Yeah, that's not ideal, guys. That's running less, less water flow than um, the other heart units. Um, so we're sitting at 1.3125 GPM with the 2.5 orifice nozzle. Now these numbers are pretty pretty consistent with the Ryobi, I think, if I remember well. So um, now with the other nozzle, let's go ahead and test the other nozzle real quick just to be thorough. Okay, so last nozzle is the 3.0 orifice, 40 degree nozzle in the bucket. Timer is ready and here we go.
All right, and with that nozzle, wow, not much of an increase, five and a half quarts. So I think that's 1.4 GPM, but that's at 700 PSI, so. Yeah, so we're getting just about 1.375 to 1.4 gallons per minute, but that's at 700 PSI, so I'm not really happy with that. Um, 1.3 at the 1100 PSI will get the job done. It's an induction motor, so you're, it's gonna last a lot longer. Uh, the benefit of this thing though, guys, is the price. Um, all the other induction motor uh, units uh, are usually around the 250 to 300 mark, I believe. Yeah, confirmed. The Ryobi 2000, oh, sorry, 2300 PSI with the induction motor is 299. The Craftsman comes in at 249. This little guy here, although the numbers are slightly less, uh, is only $199. So uh, if you want a, a, a good machine that's gonna last a good amount of time with an induction motor, this could be your choice. So anyways, guys, I hope that helps. I will have everything linked down in the description below. I'll have the pressure washer hose, the, the pressure washer wand that I prefer, those different nozzles, all that kind of good stuff for you guys so you can just go get it easily. Um, but that's it. I hope that video helps you guys. Um, it was very interesting to go through the heart brand of electric pressure washers. I'm impressed with them. They make great units. They look really good. They match the Uberflex hose, so I'm stoked on those. Uh, please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell. We'll see you on the next one, guys.